today's assignment was, I'll just go ahead and read back through this so we're all kind of on the same page. The challenge is stated right now, before we get to these questions, how might we increase student and local community value through work relationships? The we part of that is the college work relationships could be part-time work, full-time work, internships, apprenticeships, mentorships, careers, career being like after college jobs. Um, your assignment is to come to class with at least at least three intelligent questions that help us define, unpack, rephrase, identify, pick apart, and refine the challenge. And um, we ended up not using the whiteboard, we used sticky notes instead. Um, didn't have to publish them, but here were some of the tips that I shared. Empathize with the subject. So look at it from the student's point of view. Look at it from the community's point of view. So if while I'm doing any of this, if you're inspired to write something else, you can get more sticky notes. Yeah. Um, the community, the administration, the board of the school, my point of view, the alumni. So put yourself in our shoes. Think through the who, what, and where. So some of your questions are probably related to like, you know, who is this, what is it, how much does it cost, stuff like that, where are we gonna do it? But you can also really think about why are we even doing it? How would we do it? Formulate each question in a well-packed, well-worded inquiry that helps identify critical, aspect, critical aspects of the challenge. So trying to get you to put as much into one single question as you can. Don't wing it. <clears throat> and um, let's see here. And then I have the tr training breakdown. And this is actually going to be something for the college. So I already got verbal permission or kind of email permission from all the different ad council people that I report to. They really want this to go forward. They want this to become an official thing. And then I talked to a number of business owners in the community and they all like the idea. So, and you know, helping people get connected to good jobs and good jobs get connected to good people is a, is a great thing, so. So when we went through the design thinking um, series the first week, which was like eight weeks ago now, they talked about the challenge and um, you know they kind of laid it out. They had kind of a great working space there. They had us all do a little sticky note exercise. But the main thing in this first step is just defining and redefining the challenge because if we don't have the right question, then we're not gonna come up with the right answer. So we have to come up with the right question. And we're trying to figure out what is the actual need. And that's why they did that whole exercise with the little girl washing the car. Then we did that with a little coffee shop um, when we were teaching remotely, when we were isolated. So, so this is where we're at today is we're gonna just work on this challenge a little bit. Uh, let's see here. So with that in mind, why don't we go ahead? And we will do a fresh page here. And we're going to have you, what I'd like you to do uh, next step is I want you to bring all three of your questions. I think this will be the best way to do it. You bring your three questions to the middle here. So, and what you could do is actually, you guys could scoot one table over so you could people could come from both sides and put your questions on the table and then maybe start grouping them. So as you put your questions down, whoever puts theirs down first, the, as people start putting them down, see if there's any kind of logical groups. It might spill over these tables a little bit, but if there's any logical groups of your questions, because some of you might even have this same exact question or been thinking about the same thing. So as you look at it, um, kind of do it that way. You might be able to reach over this way so you don't have to crowd in too much, okay? Has everyone done Campus Clear today, by the way? Okay, great. Then you cannot possibly get sick from each other. Okay, go ahead. Split. There's a bracket under here. Handle. You push the handle up. 
same questions you can probably stack and stick your notes on top of each other if you want if it's like two people have the exact same question <laughs> if that's possible is that even possible yeah yeah <laughs> you can almost kind of stick that one with the board but not really this one here that would be something but no one can use the pairs What's that one say? This is just a personal view or objective and why. I think this also could be something that could be brought up when yeah, I think that would go really, really well or a good point to be brought up. I mean, it would be a, I mean, that's a really good. How are we doing? Feel comfortable with, I mean, how they're loosely organized? Not loosely organized, look, you sound hurt. Pretty close. For some reason, this is really bothering me. Yeah. I don't really, <laughs> I don't have OCD, but like, everything's gotta be like flush and. Just right, dress, I guess. Here we go. Good enough. All right. Great. So this group here, I'm assuming it's kind of the why part. So will there be an objective standard by which success can be measured? As Christian, why is a valuable education community or respectability important? Why does this matter? Find the defining principles for why we do what we do. All right, so this is definitely the why section. 
over here is kind of the how section, right? So how faith, how will faith use this to promote the school and advertise for potential students, advertise in the community? What if we sit in on a board meeting of faith, be able to present our ideas in front of a real board? And uh, kind of the how for parents, how can we create an environment that gives parents mental peace that their children are receiving high quality education career opportunities whilst being inundated in scriptural principles? Okay, right. And then these are all kind of the detailed questions. What are some of the needs that business owners, part of the reason I'm reading this out loud is so we can have this recorded for people that aren't here. What are some of the needs that business owners are looking for right now that students can help fulfill? How can faith reach businesses to create opportunities for internships, create demand for faith students, or faith students going to have a reputation of hard work, desire to make a difference, great attitudes? How can we market new freshman students with no job experience to potential employers? How can we match up students' goals with employers' business needs accurately and efficiently? What kind of assessment can we develop to accurately properly pair students with suitable job employers. What are some ways that we can train students or help students learn how to build strong workplace relationships? What are some lesser known businesses people that we could uh, seek to have a relationship with? Why would connecting local students and local business owners be important and how would that positively impact the community? Uh, what are FACE students looking for in employment opportunities and what are employers looking for in employees? At problems facing employers, problems facing students. How can businesses help students through contributions to school bill, experience, payment during internships, mentorship, jobs? Developing a foundation of students' desired future occupation does not have to be limited to the time after they graduate. What can we do to assist students in getting a head start in their future career? How do we actually have local community value in these local work relationships? What does local community value look like practically? What is the community looking for in potential employees that can help their company move forward in the years the students work at their business? Possibly use the church for a plug to meet small business owners, i.e. Mr. DeFord. Uh, maybe bring in different owners and talk about interviews and have them give a presentation about their business and what they're looking for in employees. How will this project give opportunities to students, companies, et cetera, that they would not have had without this project? What assistance can we provide students looking to grow in the community job market? How will this project connect groups, students, companies, in a way that maximizes efficiency and minimizes confusion? Wow, okay, these are great. These are some of the questions that I had, and many of the questions is kind of already expanding my thinking. So this is great. So let's let's talk about this now. So we've got we have a good start on some questions here. Um, I'd like to talk about it and kind of maybe what we'll do is we'll go around the room. You pick one of the three questions that you put out there, and kind of how did you know. Maybe restate the question for us and, and why you think that question is an important one to ask as we define the challenge. And we can, someone wants to volunteer to go first. You're welcome to. I can go. Yeah. Um, so, one of mine was why do we do what we do? So, I feel like that's a really fundamental thing because if we're just like seeking to get people jobs and like pay off their school bill, then we could all work at Chick fil A because they'd hire us all. So. Which like isn't a bad thing, but I feel like um, it's really important to figure out like why we're actually doing this and what our goal is and what our point is and what local community value actually looks like. Because if we don't have that as a foundation, there's nothing like to build on. That's good. I'm gonna. I think as each of you share your question, I'm gonna give you my my follow up to it, not to answer the question because I don't necessarily have the answers, but I think it's a good question because. Um, it's not like students are necessarily having a hard time finding jobs, right? So it doesn't seem like the need is, oh, students are desperate for jobs and we got to help them find jobs. So, um, and it's not like employers won't find workers, you know, even good workers. So there must be a, a 
deeper why to put in time into this project. So yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that I had was um will there be an objective standard by which success can be measured? Um and part of that was my thinking was how will we determine if it's a good fit for either the company or the student or whatever the, the group is. So who determines that? Is that like a subjective thing? Like, oh, I think this is going well, or is there like a check sheet that we're going to say these things are, are going well. And so then this is a good fit. Yeah, I, I, I like that question. I think it's a good question because even with, um, on one of the other classes we were watching that Ken Blanchard video, and he was talking about you have to have something that can measure whether or not you're being successful at this. And so on the front end, the measurement is maybe a tool that allows you to know, are we actually matching people up? We could say we're matching people up, but is there a way to actually document that so that on the front end, we know we're doing that and it kind of gives us a paper trail all the way through. Plus, it actually is the tool itself. Like if we, if that's the way we go with this, and we come up with a tool, a, a little a form, an application, something like that, then that is a that might be one of the solutions for um, getting people into the pipeline and kind of knowing what direction to go. So I, I like that question. Yeah, great. I'm gonna say I like everyone's question by the way. Just you know. <laughs> Monday's a good positive day. Melissa. Um, I asked, what are some ways that we can train students or help students on how to build strong work with place relationships? Like the original question, it was talking about just how we can increase that value through work relationships. And I was just thinking about how a lot of students probably don't even know how to create actual relationships in the workplace because a lot of us just go to work to get like make money for our tuition, then we go home at the end of the day. But um I don't know, maybe it's just me, but like, I was just thinking about a lot of students probably just don't know what that actually looks like and what the idea of having a workplace relationship with someone means. So just thinking about what are some ways that we can implement that and try to help students know how to do that, and what that actually looks like. Hmm. I like that question. <laughs> I like that. I like how you're tying in relationship with value because we do value relationships. Like that is top of the list so if you know we all while we're at school we're kind of all in this little community together right so we have these relationships that develop on campus with each other and things like that but once we go off this campus once we kind of cross that gateway one of the values that could come out of this would be more relationships but you can't just assume that everyone's going to make a relationship just because they go off campus, you know. So we that's a very good question. Yeah, um, one of mine was what is the community looking for in potential employees that can help their company move forward in the years in the years of students work at the business? I think that's an important question to ask because we can't just assume like, okay, they just want good workers who have like you know a good work ethic and everything like that. Like you want to it's important to know specifically what the employer wants so that you don't Assume, and so that you can give the students as well like a proper view of what the job entails and what the company is looking for that they're possibly going to apply for. Yeah. It's a very good question because you know we could come up with a really clever little system or some kind of what we believe is the solution, but if we haven't actually consulted the end user, we might be coming up with a solution that they don't need or something that's if we just were a little more accurate, would really be nailing the need instead of kind of just, you know, barely hitting the need. So if we're going to do it, we do, I would imagine, we're going to need to figure out what the actual needs are out there. So if I can piggyback off of that, that, that was basically my second question. So I touched on maybe bringing owners to give them presentations about their businesses and what they're looking for specifically in employees. So I have employers actually physically come in. I, I kind of focused all three of my questions on getting people here or doing something, getting actual boots on the ground and doing something. And so I think it'd be really neat if we had potential employers who are looking for specific qualities that we knew our class had to fill that specific need, have them come in and give a presentation um, about their business, you know, exactly what they're looking for. And yeah. to say, hey, 
we've got people that can step in and fulfill this need for mm -hmm. you, but actually get people here and involved in our yeah. class and to be in our program. I think that's a great tie-in coming off of Enlist last week where we actually had camp directors and people that are hiring mm -hmm. people to serve in camp physically on campus more than just one hour because I know they do kind of a job fair um, in this in the fall but it's it's not a, a ton of turnout and you know my observation is that a lot of people already have their jobs before the job fair so the job fair doesn't necessarily connect and then, like, I talked to the manager of Duluth um, a couple of days before the job fair. I didn't even know the job fair was coming up. And then it showed up in the announcements, whatever, like a day before. So I talked to her, and um, but it was too short a notice for them to come over. But they get a lot of faith students anyway. So they didn't really need to come to the job fair <laughs> to get faith students because they know Tanner, and Tanner connects everyone over there and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, so yeah, I... I think that um, that might be a piece of this is like, so how do we literally get FaceTime with the people that this is going to make the biggest difference to? Yeah. yeah. And that's very relational aspect. Katie? I was focusing more on like um, programs that the job office can offer because most people are just going to come there, want to get a job and then leave and like carry on with their life. So my question of what kind of programs can we offer to students who are looking for jobs? I was thinking more on the line of like consultation, like resume making, um, interview tips, cover letters, like that kind of stuff that we in this program have to go through and like understand. Mm -hmm. A lot of either new students or like students in other programs don't get that kind of experience. So we can offer that to them. And that would also help us grow. Like in the community, you're not just doing this just to get a job, like a quick solution, you're doing this. So you can make an impact, and like grow. So after college, you can find a job or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same exact question because this whole idea came out of that kind of question. Like, I keep getting calls from people who are looking to hire people, and so sometimes they'll make an announcement in chapel or they'll stick it to some bulletin board that I've never seen. And so I don't even know where all that goes. And then I bear, you know, some of you, if I've connected you to a job, that's one thing, but then there are so many students that I just don't know, or I don't know them very well, and I'm mm -hmm. sending them on to possibly put their name in somewhere. So with you guys, I feel confident. Like if someone's looking for something specific, I know you well enough. I've, I've worked on your resume. I've helped you with LinkedIn. I've got, I've got a relationship. I can get literally be your reference. But for so many students, I can't offer that. So that's why I don't, that's why I haven't like put our name out there with everybody because I don't want to send people that aren't a good fit. So, you know, how do you, what other services do you provide to, to help people be a good fit? It might be that they could be a good fit, but they just need to learn a couple of things. Or there might be something that, you know, fellow students, you know, we have the right spot helps people with papers. What if there's, you know, some kind of service that fellow students can provide where you help someone with a resume, you help someone with LinkedIn, you help someone with a, you know, job interview or something like that. So, yeah, I like the idea of what services. That's good. All right, who else? I can do one. Yeah. Mine was, uh, what would Jesus do? No, just like some braces. Mine, I want to, I kind of focus like from the parent side of it. Um, just because of we are just like, especially I feel like in general, I don't know, Baptist in Iowa or whatever, we're just like, you know, Faith Baptist Bible College, we're just a Bible college. Um, so it's obviously, I feel like it's kind of difficult in some of the local churches and stuff for parents to send their kids to a Bible college when they know their kids are not trying to be pastors, they're not trying to go on to seminary or anything. So like, why would you go waste your money at a private Christian college? When you can go to community college for like a grand a year and just knock out all the, most of the education you need. Um, <clears throat> so mine was, how can we create an environment that gives parents mental peace that their children are receiving high quality education and career opportunities whilst being inundated in scriptural principles? Because I think a lot of parents still want their kids to receive um, non-secular education or like good education um, or even a little bit of biblical education, but it's really hard for parents practically to be like, why drop, you know, 10, 12 grand on this school 
just for a couple Bible classes. You're not even coming out if, with a career at all. Um, so I don't know. That was kind of my thought on it. And it, I kind of wanted to get to the root of what's hindering parents from sending kids here um, for something other than just like a Bible degree. Yeah. And I, I'm one of those parents who paid big tuition for my son to come here. And we really didn't know why it seemed like the Lord was opening doors for him to come here. It still cost us like 13K, you know, his first year. Mm -hmm. So I think that you're you're touching on the whole value part of this. So, I mean, people will pay for what they value. So some people value having an Iowa State University sticker on the back of their car. They're not, you know, and so they're willing to pay whatever that costs. Some people value you know um other things but uh so what value does faith offer generally and then what value would this bring specifically that would give parents a little more confidence that they're making the right decision for their child which you know the school should also value that question because it's one word retention mm -hmm. once you have a student you know, it is so much easier to keep a student than to go out and find a new student. It's so much more, you know, profitable, you could say. It's just economically wise to try and keep that's what it is every business. It's so much better to keep a customer than to go out and find a new customer. And then the ideal is keep the customers you have and find new customers. Make your current customers raving fans. So, you know, what value from the parent's perspective is that's good. That's good. That's that's empathizing with another stakeholder in the school, right? You know, the parents, they they foot the bill on a lot of this. Some parents mortgage their houses so their kids can come here. So, you know, we got to keep that in mind. You know, what is it going on? Chris? Um, but I had a couple. Uh, one, I guess the one I'll do is about faith, I guess. Um, how can faith advertise like to potential students and in the community? And that kind of piggybacks off what he was saying, like how can we use it to like create or um, show it to potential students and say like we have this high quality internship program or mentorship program that if you come to our business uh, major, then you're gonna learn like real world. Mm -hmm. um, experience so how can we use that like of course we have to make it good enough that we can advertise it like if it's just if it's big enough that we can advertise then how can we advertise it to potential students that's good that's really good when i was talking to jeff reed about this project that's the direction he had suggested doing a project just on that one question that joe just asked um but one thing we have going for it, so I went to Northam for my undergrad. Um, one thing we have going for us over North, I'll just compare to Northam because I'm most familiar with is the city of Ankeny itself in the mm -hmm. greater Des Moines area. There are thousands and thousands of job opportunities, well paying, like, you know, even in the warehouse jobs, you can get for $13 to $15 an hour. You can go out and start your own thing. Every single business seems to be hiring. So, and Iowa is number five as far as um, lease unemployment in the United States right now. So it's just a, and Nebraska is like number one. So we're in the region, we're in the state, we're in the city, we're in the actual town where we have huge employability. Um, but how do we capitalize on that? And then how do we make sure that it's good enough that we're not overselling it, right? So because um, that would that would be a bad testimony. You, you, you kind of over promote and then you can't follow through. That would be a shame. Mm -hmm. Get mm -hmm. get the employers to show up on campus and we have 13 people that need jobs. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't be a very good. Yeah, I was thinking like if you if you just end up having people that are trying to hire people just because they need jobs, like Chick-fil-A shows up or whatever, then it's not really that special, but you need to want it to be like more on the education experience side where yeah. people are learning skills that they wouldn't otherwise learn mm -hmm. on their own, that they yeah. couldn't get on their own. That's good. That's good. And that and that ties into a couple of other questions about what what we might want to think about with this that we would offer before the job is ever put on the table. So that might be the distinguishing factor is the pre-job preparation or 
you know, and that could look like a lot of different things as we talk about this. I've, I've thought through that part of it a little bit. Um, and it might be something we can kind of create like a dual opportunity, not just to get you ready for a job, but if you participate in this, you get a digital badge, which can go on your resume. You know, you, you know, you attended these certain things and, you know, it makes you more attractive in the long run for your employers. Did everyone go? Uh, we got a few people that didn't make it today for one reason or another. So we'll have them also uh, submit their thoughts on this. So any other thoughts to kind of tie this together? So we have about five minutes left here. Um, we don't have class on Wednesday, but we do have class on Friday. What I'm what I'm thinking I'll do is I will uh, I'll sort these based on the way you've already organized them, and then we'll get we'll collect from the other your classmates. Um, the next step. Let's, let's So if we've identified the challenge well enough, you know, so which I'm not, you know, this, this is all these questions are very good. So now we got to figure out how do we get answers to these questions? Um, everyone is equally, you know, important. So, but we got to find a way to get a few answers to this. So the next step is, um, making sure we're not building it alone, right? So that's why this is a group project and not just everyone working on their own version of it. <clears throat> Understand how to value the feedback of others. So we're considering each other's, you know, and even while we're talking about, I can see some of you shaking your head and some of you kind of like, it's like, oh yeah, I see that. Always start with a low resolution provocation. So, you know, we don't have to come up with a 10 step plan at this stage. We're just trying to say, are we heading north or northwest, you know? And then test fast, learn fast, fail fast to solve the challenge. So we're gonna come up with ideas that, you know, if they don't quite work, once we kind of all start talking about it, it's okay. We, you know, it's, it's we can move on to the next thing. So now we don't have the luxury of, of being, you know, a full blown consultation firm where we can work on this for like a year and come up with a comprehensive plan we have to kind of keep keep this thing rolling and um and be willing to kind of submit something at the level that we're actually able to achieve so but i think that the uh next step friday is we're going to need to kind of talk about this some more so come back at it now that we've all been exposed to all the different questions um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll get this all documented somehow. I don't know a word document or something. I'll publish it in a discussion group. Get the other classmates that haven't submitted anything to submit their questions. Um, and then no class Wednesday. I'd like you to be thinking about this, but Friday um, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about this. We're going to we're going to come back and talk about it from a different angle. So we're going to come back at these questions from a different angle. And um, we're probably going to need to figure out a way to come up with some answers to some of these questions, which is, you know, I don't know if we're going to have to get feedback from other people or if we're going to narrow down which questions, like maybe rank, which questions are most important to answer first, things like that. So I'll think about that. I need, I need to chew on this a little bit too, because, because we have a big group, it's just more questions. So we got to think how we're going to do this in a timely manner. So just keep an eye out for the discussion board. And um, if there's anything that you need to do, it won't be heavy before Friday. It'll be pretty light. But then we'll all be here Friday, talk about it. Um, I'm assuming Friday classes at the normal time, even though there's a Thursday night service. Is that how it usually is? Okay. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll, we will we will tough it out. So maybe someone will bring donuts or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let you go. Just keep an eye out for that discussion board. Great questions, by the way, everyone. You guys did an awesome job.